So in Michigan, it's illegal to do stem cell research. Um, and, and that's just not true. Michigan-based companies like Armstrong in Ann Arbor and Innovative Technologies are already moving stem cell therapies from the theoretical to the clinical with human subjects active in bone regeneration, critical limb ischemia, cardiac and neural regeneration, and even wearable artificial kidneys, most using the patient's own stem cells. Most universities in the state do stem cell research. Indeed, Dr. Morrison, who will be shown later in the episode, heads University of Michigan Center for Stem Cell Biology, and they have just raised over a quarter of a million dollars for their human embryonic stem cell research all being done here in the state under current Michigan law. Human embryonic stem cell research is not banned, nor is it limited to the Bush approved lines. Michigan law prohibits experimentation on live embryos, fetuses, or neonates, with evidence of life being defined as determined by the same medical standards as are used in determining evidence of life of a spontaneously aborted embryo fetus at approximately the same age of gestational development. This type of protection has a long history going back primarily to the Nuremberg Code and the Declaration of Geneva in 1948 Medical Code of Ethics. The Nuremberg Code is a set of principles for human experimentation set as a result of the Nuremberg trials at the end of the Second World War. The heinous disregard for human life under researchers like Dr. Mengele emphasized just how far one might go in the name of science. The Nuremberg Code introduced principles such as consent, lack of coercion for research subjects and donors, and the need of the research to benefit the subject upon which the research is being performed. So strong is this concept that under the Nuremberg Code, no experiment should be conducted where there is a reason to believe in advance that death or disabling injury will occur, except perhaps in those experiments where the experimental physicians also serve as subjects. In other words, if there's good reason to believe the subject might die during the experiment, then you have to be one of the subjects upon which the experiment is being performed. The Uh, Representative Andy Meisner and myself uh, have a package of bills that would permit stem cell research in the state of Michigan, which is currently banned, uh, except for lines that might have been involved in research prior to the ban. And I think we only have one in the state that is actually uh, active. We're not going to permit any cloning. I know people. Before continuing discussion of House Bill 4616, we should examine a recent development in the expansion of federal funding for human embryonic stem cell research. You probably missed it because, as usual, the media had more important stories to report. The President issued Executive Order 13435, in part because some politicians were a little too partisan to pass the bill and bring it to his desk for signature. But this bill would expand federal funding on human embryonic stem cells and other pluripotent stem cells, including most of the clinic embryos that would be thrown away. Here are some of the basic methods that are 
Here are some of the experimental tools that the federal government will pay for, relieving cash-strapped Michigan from having to fund human embryonic stem cell research. Hasn't your company found a way to take a cell from a human embryo, grow it next to an embryo, extract the stem cells, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and therefore not destroy the embryo? And, and isn't is that possibly the, the the ground where this can move forward? Yes, and absolutely. In fact, uh, our one of our lead science uh, scientists in uh, Australia at the International Stem Cells Conference announced uh, the fact that we've developed a third line from that from that technology that you described. It's utilizing a technology that uh, is used in IVF clinics called pre-implantation genetic diagnosis where you extract a cell to determine whether that embryo has a, a disease and what we do is divide that cell, allow the test to occur in one of the cells and we develop a, a stem cell line in the other and yes it does address the president's We're not going to permit any cloning. Yeah, I know people Saying something enough times may condition people to think that it's true, but it doesn't make it true. And if you're not going to be doing cloning and all you're interested in are the clinic embryos that are just going to be thrown away, then why does the bill say the utilization of a somatic cell nuclear transplantation procedure for the sole purpose of creating an embryo for the extraction of embryonic stem cells? Now, why did Dr. Morrison take so much time to explain this in a previous hearing? It here. And Missouri, which had a constitutional amendment last year to uh, permit this, has had a stall in actually implementing their research. And in, in that case, there's over a billion dollars that's waiting to be re, uh, invested there that could be invested in Michigan. How, wh What's holding up Missouri is a challenge to the deceptive nature of the cloning clause put in Amendment 2. And this bill would not be bringing in those dollars here because it has the same type of clause. Attempting SCNT in humans when it is not efficiently successful in other primates puts women's health unnecessarily at risk, for it is from them that the primary research material, eggs, come. Recognizing the risks to the cost-efficient poor women of color around the globe, the UN requested a moratorium on all forms of cloning, and Michigan shouldn't help exploit these women. I testified against this with Andy Meisner's previous bill, 4900,